Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to create this game level map. And this will be your third exercise within exercise three. But this will this tutorial will also cover how to create your own game level map for your project, because that's going to be project three. So let's get started. Alright, so let's go over and we'll go over to a new page. And you want to create a new letter size page for this exercise. And we're going to go and you're going to actually have to download a file, which I'll tell you about in one second here. We're going to go find it here on my desktop. Okay. And this is going to be called Game Map Sketch. Okay. And, I'm, and that will be uploaded to our learning path. And so you're going to actually download this link. Okay. And we don't have to check any of these things because I'm going to actually uh, use it as a template like we did for our snowman. So I'm just going to place it first. So let's place it here. Okay. Ooh, it's really huge. So we're going to have to downsize it here. So let's actually make it a little smaller. All right. So let me just scale this down quickly here. Hold down my shift key as I, as I make this a little smaller. Okay. And we want to fill our page as much as we can with this, even though it doesn't quite fill our page. All right, there we go. Okay, now, once we get that into place, then what we want to do is we want to go to our transparency palette. And first thing is, if you don't know where your transparency palette is, you can go look up under Window. But this transparency palette, what we're going to do is we're going to set this to Multiply. And then we're going to lower the opacity. Okay? And we're going to be work there. That's going to be used as our template. Now let's go to our layers, and we'll lock this layer and make a new layer. Okay, and we're going to make this layer underneath. And so I'm just going to actually recreate this whole thing here on this layer. So first thing we're going to start off with is we are going to start off with a rectangle. And I'm going to move that rectangle so it actually covers our background and this will be our background rectangle and we'll fill this with a with a uh, color of green for the moment um, and then later on we'll get back to that okay so actually you know I'm gonna actually change that green maybe well, actually you know I'll, I'll leave it like that for the moment okay but anyway first thing I'm going to cover is in this tutorial is using a different type of gradient okay and that is this, this freeform gradient. So we're going to create this tree with that freeform gradient. So let's zoom in here. And I'm going to get the ellipse tool. And we're going to make an ellipse here. And the way I created this tree was actually with three ellipses. So let's make this a little darker so we can see this, OK? And we'll move it into place. And then we'll make it a little larger here. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and make our tree out of this this circle here. So actually, let's let's do like this. We're actually going to pull this over, and as I'm starting to pull it over, I'm going to hold down my Alt key, and that will copy it. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing over here. And actually, I held down Shift the last time, but I start to move it, and then I'm holding down my Alt key. That will copy. I don't need to hold down Shift this time because we're going to go down that way. Now this time I may need to because I'm going to move it here. And then hold down my Alt key, and then I can hold down my Shift key if I want to keep it perfectly up and down. And so that will create a tree shape here, very very simple. And you can create any kind of tree shape you want for your actual game map. But for this exercise, I thought this would be the simplest one to do. Now what we'll do is we'll make this into one shape. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use our Pathfinders uh, tools. And if you don't have your Pathfinders up, you can look up our window. And under window, you'll see Pathfinder, okay? And so we're going to click that first one here, which is called Unite. And see, that creates it into one shape, all right? Now let's go and let's create the trunk shape. We might as well do that right now just to get it over with, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. We'll pick a brown here for it since this will be our trunk. And we'll pull this out a little bit like this and pull it here. And then I'm going to actually use my pen tool. So I'm going to get P 
And I'm going to aim for sort of the middle. Actually, I've got the middle right there, it tells me. And then I'm going to click. And then I'm going to use my arrow key to toggle down a little bit. And then I'm going to do uh, Shift-C. Now, that will bring up this tool right here. We've talked about this before, and I've used it before. This is the anchor point tool. And so Shift-C is the keyboard shortcut for that. And it looks like I'm going to have to untangle it this way. And so we're going to round that off. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to actually curve our trunk so it can curve inward like this just a little bit, okay? And then let's actually move this, okay? One of the things we could do is, and, and I'm going to just move it this way because this is, I want you guys to learn how to do this. And that is, I'm going to cut it. Command X, and then I'm going to select my background shape and do Command F, which is paste in front. Because that's a quick and easy way to move things if we have more and more shapes, okay? And so this thing is shaded in a way that you can't use a regular gradient on it. You could use gradient mesh, but I just learned about this tool um, last quarter from one of my students because I had no idea that Adobe had included this. This is a really cool tool. And that is, this is our free form gradient tool. So I'm gonna click on this free form gradient for a moment, okay? And it puts a gradient in there. And actually, let's see here. Each one of these things, by the way, is kind of like a radial gradient, if you take a look at it. So it does like this. So you can actually pull it out and make it larger if you want to. You can add more to them. And so what we're going to be doing is we're just going to move some of these around here. Uh, we're going to take this one, and we'll make it a darker green here. Okay. And I'm just using my swatches palette right now. We could actually adjust that a little bit better later on. But let's move that down. And then let's put another one right here. Okay. And then we're going to sample one of the colors from up above. Or, you know what, let's, let's actually go and make a lighter color already. Here, there we go. I just went to my swatches. And then we're going to actually move this one just a little bit down. And then we'll get the eyedropper. Each time I'm doing this, I'm just picking the color picker here. And I can actually sample what's already down there. Now, it's, it's sampling that. Now, one of the reasons it's doing that, and I wasn't expecting that, is because the way I use this. And we can just turn this off for a moment, our template. Because it's, sometimes it's easier to build things when that template's not on all the time. We'll click off the color picker, and we'll put another one in here. And then we can go back to our color picker and pick this color. And so I'm just moving things around a bit. And we're just going to make a simple tree shape here. We'll make, we can make this a little bit bigger here. It's really cool. This, is, this really saves time because, you know, I, I'm just astounded by this new tool. It's, it's really a great tool to use. And let's just bring this over here. And I'm, like I said, I'm just playing around with it to see what I can get out of it. Oh, there we go. That's nice. I'm going to put another shape down, another gradient in there. And the way we have to do that is to click off the picker and then come over here and then click here. And then let's go get the color picker again. And then we'll, we'll select that color or something in between there. Yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna put another one in there. I'm just playing around this with this to make it look cool. And so right here, we'll use the color picker and make this as dark as that. And so we get a nice looking tree shape. Very easy to do, see that? And right now it's blending into our background. So I'm actually going to change our background, my background color a little bit. And we'll just go over to our CMYK sliders. Now, if yours is set up to, for RGB or whatever, you can adjust that. Because I like to work in CMYK since it's, 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 it's the uh, color scheme for printing, okay? So let's, let's just move this down a little bit and we can adjust that. And while we're doing that, why don't we have some fun here and we'll actually color this. But before we do that, let's let's make, make let's make our path, okay? Because I'm going to actually put a gradient onto that big rectangle so we have some variations in, in grass color. So so let's go get our pen tool and let's go and click around here and draw out our path. And like I said, this will be supplied to you this uh the sketch so that you'll be able to work on top of it. And the way I'm doing these is I'm not going back and killing the handle every time because I'm actually trying to get it nice and curvy like this. And you get, like I said, the more you use your pen tool, I've said this in the past, the better you get with it as far as predicting how it's going to work here. 
and just take some time. Now what I might do, since I have my template on here, and it's on top, what why don't I just go and change my color? I can do that in the middle of doing this. I'll go over to my swatches and we'll pick some kind of color here for the moment. I like that color for the moment. And we can change that color a little bit later. Okay, now let's pull this out. Now I'm gonna actually have to, have to kill this handle because if you notice one thing's happening is as I pull down here, it doesn't conform to anything. I'm gonna try to make it conform though. Let's try it before killing the handle, okay? Because I like to try things as I'm working here. There, that, that works, okay? And we're gonna go up there and adjust that curve in just a second. So you saw what I just did there, okay? And, you know, killing the handle's great for when you gotta go in a different direction, but if you're trying to keep it nice and curvy, sometimes it's good just to leave that second handle there. And I'm just gonna get my direct selection tool. I used the keyboard shortcut A to get to it quickly so I can move this, all right? And then we'll just move this handle right here a little bit more and maybe I'll shorten this handle a little bit so that will work better and it doesn't have to be exactly like the path but the path there the, the drawing there is for your for your guide there it, it's, it's it's as a template for you to work on top of okay so let's or, or work underneath in this case so let's go and turn it off for a moment and uh, first thing we're going to do we'll crop this path and the way we're going to crop it is by using our shape builder tool. So I'll select the path and then I'll sh select the background shape. I'll do shift M and we'll get rid of what's sticking out here. Now, if we were going to do a blur, because I'm going to talk about Gaussian blurs, I wouldn't be cropping. And we're going to be using a Gaussian blur at some point in, in this uh, tutorial so you can learn how to do it. See, I get so picky. I like to make things perfect. Okay, there we go. All right, so. Let's go and let's play around with color for a moment here. And what I'm going to do is let's go over to our gradient, our freeform transgradient. And, and so, so let's, we've got to change our colors because the colors got all screwed up here. And I'm going to actually, you know, just go over here and actually, you know, I might switch to CMYK so I can see a little bit better and have a little bit greater maneuverability here. The other thing we could do and I, would, I can supply this for you, is I'm going to actually probably go in here and download a, a picture here. Actually, I've already got a picture download. I'm just going to ins install it here. So let's go over here and we'll go to Place. Okay. And let's place, uh, in, there they are, Game Level Maps. Okay. So I'm going to place these three here so we can look at them as we're working. And I'm going to move these about here. There we go. All right, so we can, now we'll have some color, things to pick color off of. Makes our job easier, you know? Because why make it so so hard on ourselves when we're having to try to figure out what color to make it? The other way I could have done was to build the whole thing in grayscale, which, which works, and then change to color. But you know what? When I've got this color picker here, and we'll just make this image just a little larger, although it might may go out of, it's a low res image, but we can p always pick color off a low res image. All right, and what I'm going to do is we're just we'll move these to their own layer. Okay, I'm going to move. I'm going to make a new layer here. We'll call it reference. Okay, just so I can keep track of it. And this is how I'm going to move them. You see this little dot right here? That was that's going to move them all up there. Okay. And then we can lock that layer and we can turn it off and on as we need it. All right. So now let's go in here and let's get back to editing the gradient. Now, I just noticed this when I was starting to use this. And that is, it you can't automatically edit it until you go to edit gradient. Now you can go and actually edit it. Okay. And so let's pick this color here and we'll get the eyedropper. And we can pick a color off of, off of this. Okay. Or off of this one. And let's pick another color here. We'll pick this color here, perhaps. I kind of like this darker one, but I'm going to pick something a little different for this, too. I may, might pick that color. We could put another little point there, and then we'll, we'll make that a different color. And I'm just going to sample off of here to see what colors we can get off of here, because... You know, we got different types of greens. We can pick a green off the, one of their trees just to see what it looks like. 
okay? And the thing is, when we're picking color, see, we can pick it from anywhere, all right? And and we can also change color when, when we're doing this, too, because we don't have to stick to their color. But it's 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 just, like I said, it's a quicker way to begin coloring things. And we, we may go back to this later on. I'm going to pull this down here. I just like to play around. That's, that's my problem is I get into these things. But see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually adjust this so that this goes a little bit lower. And what I did was I just lowered my yellow on it. Okay. And you don't have to do this for your tutorial. We just want it, But I want you using this gradient here just so you learn how to do it. Because I think it's so important to learn new, uh, you know, learning new things. Okay. And so let's go and put in another point here. I kind of like that lighter. I'll right, bring that down here. Okay. Now. I'm going to live with that. I say that because I could sit there. I could sit here for another 10 minutes playing around with that. But let's draw in. we got our path. Let's draw in our river. Okay? So we got a tree. Let's do our river next. And what we're going to do is we'll just get our pen tool here. And we'll just trace it out. Now this has just a big curve kind of going around here like that. Now we could get in here closer. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit if you want to try to mimic this exactly my sketch is just a real rough sketch i did in photoshop um you know and when you do your sketches if you don't can't sketch in photoshop doesn't mean you should it just means that you know you use your pencil okay and scan it with your your uh, camera phone you know just because i do things one way does not mean that for your sketches you have to do them the way i'm doing them okay so let's get that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out this blue here, since this has a nice blue. And so that's going to be for that. And then I'm going to make the bank of the river, because it's good to have kind of a place where we can see some ground. And you know, I'm, I'm just going to make it the same size. I'm going to go all the way up in here, and then we'll crop with it. But let's, let's select one of these brownish colors they have here all right they have this color right here let's see if i can get to it and it might be a little darker i'm gonna pick a little orangier one here maybe or maybe a, a yellow yeah i like that one okay we're gonna use that one all right so the, let's uh use our um shape builder tool so i just selected both those shapes do shift m okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to do these little they're more or less triangles, okay? And I'm going to deselect. Shift Command A is deselect if you didn't want to have to go up and, and get your selection tool here. And we can crop all this later. But I'm thinking of leaving this now because I'm going to talk about using a clipping mask, okay? And that's going to be a little later. But let's go out here and draw the first one of these. And then let's go over here and pick that darker color here, which I... Which I did not like in the beginning, but I think that's going to be a good color for that, okay? And I do like it for that. Okay, so let's go on here. And I'm actually curving a little bit. Usually I don't, but since my drawing was curving, I figure you why not. And we'll crop all this out. And we'll move things, too, because the problem right now is this is sitting on top of our tree we just made. And we'll have to move that very simply, or move the river one or the other. And we're going to crop these two, so let's just keep moving along here. I'm just going to make that regular rectangle. Okay, now, let me get my selection tool so we can select all these things, and we're going to crop them. And we'll zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to do a command minus quickly here so I don't switch tools. And do shift M, and then let's... Make sure I got here. Let's see here. I think I've got, yeah, okay, I didn't get that. Now, Shift M. I have to get all those shapes. There we go. Oh, I missed this one. So, back to selection tool and hold down the Shift key to get that. And then do Shift M again. There we go. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is I am going to actually. I hit that keyboard shortcut. <laughs> I was doing something there. My problem sometimes in doing these tutorials is I work between Photoshop and Illustrator a lot. And there's some of the, some things work the same, but some things work a little differently. So I find myself sometimes 
use a keyboard shortcut in Photoshop that is meant for Illustrator and vice versa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go around here, trace around, and we're going to trace out a darker color for this river, and we'll move it into place in just a second. But let's see if we can find a darker color. There's a darker blue here, okay. I like that. And we'll just move this into place. So the way I'm going to do this again is I'm going to cut it, Command X. We'll select the river shape and do paste in front. There we go. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do a... Now, I could crop all these things, okay? And let me show you what, what I'm talking about here is... Okay, I'm, I'm going to crop off at least our river and our banks and do shift M and shift M shift M and shift M okay now here's what I'm talking about here let me put a Gaussian blur on this let's turn off our drawing for a moment and that's layer one up there and then let's go and do this we're gonna go to effect blur Gaussian blur okay and Gaussian Blur will give that a soft edge. Okay, just like that. Very nice. Okay, now the, here's the deal. If I was to crop this thing, and we'll talk more about the Gaussian Blur in just a second here. But if I was to crop this thing, this is what's going to happen. Shift M. And this happens a lot. Is Notice this. Well, first of all, it goes outside there, and second, it blurs along there. We don't want that effect. We want it to be hard going all the way around there. So I'm going to undo that. And this is what I wanted to talk about here, and that is doing a clipping mask. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the river shape because the river shape is the shape that everything's kind of based upon, or at least the, the bank is made out of that too. Okay, and we're going to select that shape and we're going to copy it, okay? And then I'm going to actually select this shape here and we'll do paste in front, okay? So we're going to paste in front of that shape and then we'll just click this here and we're holding down our shift key and I'm clicking, I'm, I'm selecting the part of the shadow that's sticking out. So now I've got the river shape and the shape that is sticking out. And I'm going to make a clipping mask, okay? And clipping masks are really cool because they are a way of cropping without cropping. And let's go, it's Command 7s, our keyboard shortcut. But notice what happens there. We'll zoom in so you can see that. All right? See, that's very nice. It cleans that up very well, okay? And I may do, a, do another one here just to show you how to do a clipping mask because clipping masks are so important when if you're using any Gaussian blur. Now let's go back here. We'll bring our tree to the front. I'm gonna bring my path to the front. And so I'm just gonna select all those things and do shift command uh, left bracket. Or if you don't know where that's at, it's up under object, arrange, and bring to front, okay? All right, so now we got that done. Let's see what else we're gonna do here. I'm gonna make this a color that's a little lighter, maybe like this. Oh, I don't have it selected. Let me make sure it's selected there. And then get my eyedropper and come over here. Yeah. All right. I like that better. That's a nicer color for our pathway here. All right. I see I've got to make something else here. And that is I've got a little bridge. It's not much of a bridge. It's just a few little lines. So let's make it here real quickly. And going to make it so it goes underneath the pathway okay and so let's go and we'll see if we can pick a color or make a color up let's see what we can do here what would make a good color here for this I'm wondering maybe this yeah that's not bad I like that color okay and what we can do is we're going to move this uh, I'm going to I'm going to cut it and then we'll select the, the path and then we'll do paste in back command B okay so that's useful we'll turn off our our drawing for a second you see I've got to actually draw this here and it looks like I got to bring this to the front so we'll bring our tree to the front here all right 
and do shift command left bracket and bring that to the front there because that little part was sticking in front of it. Now I've got this little line here. And so we might as well just draw this shape in because I have a little shadow area underneath that bridge. And I'm going to pull that over there. Okay, we'll, we'll turn this off for a moment. And we'll zoom out. And let's see what kind of color we could use for that. You know, you know let's try maybe something like that. Or let's see if there's any other. You know, we could try this or even a real dark color. All right. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let's send that to the right place. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to cut it, Command X. And we'll paste it in back of this. So it does that. All right, now I've got my river set up, okay? So that's really nice. Now, let's continue on, and let's start dealing with with this cast shadow here, and then we'll do some other things. Because I'm almost done here, really, to be honest with you. It's not going to take much longer here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go and get my elliptical tool. Now, when you're doing a cast shadow, sometimes you got to really think about the shapes. Now, if you notice, a lot of these don't have... The, their cast shadows are very minimal, okay? And sometimes they don't have a cast shadow at all. But a cast shadow can make your uh, art feel much, much more realistic. And believe me, doing cast shadows is not easy because you have to think about the shape of the shadow, okay? And so let me go and get a color here, right there. Let's turn off my drawing here for a moment. And then... We're going to move this, Command X. We'll move it in front of the path. And I'm hoping that this is going to be right, but let's do select the path and do paste in front. Okay, there we go. Okay, that happened to be in the right place. Otherwise, I might have to move the tree again. All right, so let's select that, and then we're going to do a Gaussian blur. Okay, so do blur, Gaussian blur. All right, now when you do a Gaussian blur, by the way, you know, you and we were talking about. I was said I wanted to talk more about this. You want to adjust it so that it blurs enough, and we can make this either real blurry or less blurry. Let's say I make it real blurry, and then I realize later on I don't want it as blurry. Okay, because this is what happens with a lot of students is they'll do this, and then what they'll do is they'll go, oh, I hate that blur. I want to do another blur on it, and then they'll go and put another blur on it. And it, they apply a new effect here, and there's a problem with this, okay? Because notice one thing here. I've got my appearance palette open, okay? This is where you should edit your your effects, okay? And what it did was it added another Gaussian blur to this shape. We don't add, need to add more than one blur to it, okay? We can add another effect to it, but not another blur. And in the past, I've seen students have, like, you know, maybe five or six blurs on an object, and their file is really slow and it's huge because these blurs add something. And that is they add a lot of memory because they use raster effects, okay? So I'm going to take off this, this one blur here. And we're going to just click on it and hit the trash can, okay? And if we want to change the blur, just go to your appearance palette. If it's not up, but op, open that is. <laughs> we want to go up under window and there's the appearance palette, okay? And then we'll click on this, and when we click on it, see, this comes up. So it, what's really great is, is that that automatically just pops up, and we can automatically fix that, okay? So one of the other things I want to talk to you about the blur is this. When you're, If you're using a Gaussian blur, make sure your document raster effect settings are set to 300, all right? Because if you opened up a, a different size document, let's say something that's made for the for the internet, for the web, you know, and uh, basically, you know, it may be 72 pixels. And if this thing is set at 72 pixels, okay, it may look good, but as we zoom in, you'll see, I'm hoping you can see that it gets choppy. If you print it, it's going to be kind of real choppy. And that's why I want, I wanted to mention that to you is make sure that if you're using document, uh, if you use a Gaussian blur, just double check your rast document raster effect settings. And that's right up under effect, document raster effect settings, okay? Now, the that, that shadow is not working yet because it's covering the pathway. So let's go to our transparency palette. 
And what I usually like to do is I'll use multiply, but multiply makes it darker, which is good. But then we'll lower our opacity. Okay, so see it? That's going to look a lot better. There we go. And by the way, I actually had a gradient for this. You know, let's might as well do this at the, uh, since I'm zoomed in here because on my other one, I had used a gradient. There we go. All right, it's got, that's interesting there. I only put one of these in here. So let's go to my swatches and we'll start off and we'll pick a dark, couple of dark colors. We'll add a few here, a couple here. Maybe. And the reason why I'm putting all these in and they're all the same is because I'm just, these kind of help stop the gradient from flowing over, okay? So I'm going to move that there. And what I mean by that is I didn't want this gradient flowing all the way to the bottom. I, I wanted it, I wanted the tree to cast a shadow there. Okay, if I want another uh, color there, I could do that. And see, I, this is so easy to manipulate. You know, I really love how this works. It makes our, and we could take it even further out. Whoops, I just took it off the page. Let's undo. I took it off the, uh, outside the image there. That's how you can take one out quickly, obviously. Or you can use your trash can if you need to move, take, remove one. And I'm just, I'm just moving this around. Maybe, maybe I might, like I said, I could just play with this all day long. It's, it's really a cool thing that they have created here. And I just wanted to do this because I wanted to make that tree look a little bit more three dimensional. You know, oh, that's a little too bright there. So, so see, always got, got to go back to edit gradient. We'll click this. We'll get our eyedropper, and we'll pick this. We'll pick up a color somewhere. Well, actually, you know what? We'll, if we have to, we'll zoom in here. We'll zoom in there. And then let's do it again. Edit gradient. We'll come to this one. And then we'll pick up, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I like that. All right, let's zoom out here. Let's see what it looks like. See if that looks better. Not bad. Not bad. See, I get picky when I do these things here. I want to be quick about doing a demonstration. A tutorial but the problem is you know I like things to look great and we're going to use this one but let's go back here and yeah this may make it look better move that one up a little bit more zoom out and let's take a peek and see what this thing looks like oh that's much better and by the way if we want to add and I didn't have this in my drawing but if we wanted to add um, some bark to this, because we, you know, it's you can't really make our gradient have some hard edges in it, but we can simply, if we wanted to make bark, come in here, pick up a, a darker color. Actually, <laughs> they picked up the gradient color. We just want a flat shape, okay? And we can make a couple of bark like shapes here or shapes that will be the shadows within the bark. And I'm just making this up as I'm going along here, as you can see. And let's zoom, you know, maybe I'll make one more here coming from the bottom here. All right. And that one's sticking outside the shape. See how picky I get here? But this is how I also. When I look at your work and I grading it, I look at it up close because I'm looking for perfection. Because anything that I grade as an A or give a hundred percent to is something that is perfect. It's flawless. Okay, and that's something that you know people go, "Oh, you didn't give me an A." It's like, well, you know what? If it's not perfect, you don't deserve an A. You know, an A is reserved for for those projects that are absolutely perfect. Okay, so. Let's go to transparency, and we'll put let's put multiply on this. So I just like to play around here. You know, I actually enjoy doing building things and creating artwork. There we go. Let's see if I like that any better. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> it makes me realize I probably need more bark around here if I'm going to do that. And like I said, this is just what I do here. You know, I I get into making things. And I just, I enjoy it. It is something that, you know, brings great joy to me. And that's why I hope it brings to you because, you know, I've had to have talks with my students in the past 
my illustration students. A lot of those guys, you know, I'll, 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 I'll have a student sometimes that maybe they don't want to draw. You have to draw to be an illustrator. And I talk to them about, you know, you got to enjoy doing this. If you don't enjoy doing this, this is not the right career path for you, you know. And, th and you know, it's like you should have a passion for doing this, you know, something that will actually cause you to, to want to do it on, like, a Friday night, for instance, rather than, rather than going out and having a good time. You would rather sit at home and actually work on your artwork, you know, because it brings joy to you. That, and those are the people who, who become professionals. Those are the people who go on to have careers in our industry, whether they're a graphic designer or they're a game developer. I'm trying to make this path close here. All right. And let's just live with this, okay? And and seriously, that's I, I can live with that right there. Um, but th but that is the truth, okay? And and if you really, you know, if you want to go on with your career, it's not just about making good grades in your class. It's, it's about doing good work. All right, now let's go continue here. Let's... So I just got off on a little tangent there, but I thought I would throw that little speech in there on this tutorial since this is going to be my last tutorial I give. All right, so I've got a couple of things here. I've got a, I've got a uh, house here, and I'm actually going to just use one of my houses I'd created before. So since I was going to have you create a house-like structure, I'm going to take the one that I created in the last tutorial here are the first tutorial of these exercise tutorials for this 3D effects and we'll do copy command C we'll come over here and we'll just do command V and paste all right now we're going to resize this thing because it's really big so and we can also change the perspective on it because you know right now actually it fits right in there perfectly but let's say if it wasn't Let's say you've, you you had a different angle. We could always go in here. And I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to actually go to isometric right. Whoa, that's kind of interesting. I'm going to go isometric left. There we go. So it's going to be a little bit more isometric. Remember I talked to you about that briefly when I was doing this tutorial here? Because if you're going to do a game map, you know something, we're going to be looking down on this. We want to be able to adjust this, okay? And let's see. Yeah, see that right there? That's a That was a little problem there. Every time I was using this thing a little bit, it goes to these uh, what looks like wire framing, and you lose all of your, sh you know, it's hard to see, but then as soon as you start doing something else, you adjust it. And so I'm just adjusting the shading on this thing. And we'll just call, it, call that for what it is. That should do us, okay? It's not identical to what my drawing is, but, you know, I just wanted to show you that you can adjust your your structure to kind of fit in here if you need to. You know, if you need to rotate it or move it around, we don't have to we don't have to st uh, stick with where it's at, okay? We can actually move that thing around, and edit it since it's a 3D object. So now let's make let's make a shadow for this. And I'm just going to kind of base it off this drawing that I already have here. And my thing about cast shadows is this, is that cast shadows are tough because you have to imagine how the light's hitting an object and what and how light is being prevented from, from coming around that object. And so it's not always just a shape here. Let's use the same color since we're going to keep this. I'm going to turn off my drawing for a moment. And then let's move this cast shadow here we'll do command x and click on the background shape and do paste in front okay and then i'm going to put a gaussian blur on it because that gaussian blur is going to make it look a lot better it's going to make it look a little bit more like a shadow we don't want to blur it too much so i'm going to bring that down just a little bit and we can always readjust that okay and so let's take a look and see what that looks like that looks good okay all right now I'm going to build this part, and then we'll build our tree. I th oh, and then we got to build these things, these little markers. I just sort of created this, the, those little markers from two circles. All right, let's just get that. Oops. Remember, when you're sampling color off your image and you're using your template on top like I have, you've got to turn that layer off. And then we're going to have to move that thing 
to the right position. Or I could bring the house to the front. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do Shift Command, bring to the front there. Okay, there we go. All right, very good. Now, let me continue on. And we're going to do a tree here. And in case you didn't do a tree, because I know I kind of left that open for what you could do with that revolving exercise, but let's make a tree, okay? And I could use this as my template in a way, but let's use our rulers, Command R, and go over to our side ruler and bring in a guide to help me with it, okay? And then I'm going to draw in just this part. And we can go straight straight across too if we want to, but I'm just kind of doing it at a slight angle. We'll move this over a little bit more. Move that down just a little bit more. It doesn't have to be identical because it's going to do it for us. Okay. I'm going to go straight across here. That's so key. All right. And then we'll close this path. And then what we're going to need to do is deselect it for a moment. Shift Command A. And then I'm going to get my pen tool. Or you know what? Let's just use our rectangle tool. This makes our life so much easier. Okay. And make sure we're on that path there. And we'll pull that down here. Now let's turn off our drawing. And let's assign color to these shapes. Okay. And so we're going to select that shape and make it a green color. Okay. And then we're going to select this shape and make it a brown color. All right. Now... If we revolve this thing, I've done one thing wrong, and maybe you might guess here before we get to it. But let's go to 3D Revolve, and that is, if you'll notice it, is I didn't group it. It does a nice job revolving it. Let's do Cancel here. Okay. So I did that on purpose because in case you're having trouble there with that one tutorial, you got to group your, your shapes together, your objects there, before you do any of these 3D effects, okay? And it will actually do a much better job. We'll revolve it again here. Ooh, I like the way that looks. Now my tree's a little funky looking compared to my little, well, from, from what I would create before, but but we can change that. I'm, I'm just gonna actually go and let's, let's actually change the angle on this a little bit. We'll, we'll rotate it down here because it's good to learn how to, how to manipulate things here. Maybe I don't want it that far. I just want to see a little bit of that. There we go. Yeah, okay, that's good. I like that, like that. All right. And we got plastic shading on. Now, here's the deal with shading. Okay. Now, we can't zoom out here, but let's, let's just click OK, and then we'll go back and fix this. All right. So, when you create your game level map, we want to make it look as three-dimensional as you can make it. But we... And so that includes doing shadows, and we're doing using shadows through our revolving and extruding and making shadows and shadow shapes. Um, but one of the key things is you want to think about your light source coming from either one or two. Well, you want to have a one direct light source. It makes your job much easier. And I always tell my students you should think about your light as either coming from your upper left down or upper right down. Now notice all of our shadows here are on our right side. Okay. And so basically that means that the tree shadow should be coming from this. The shadow should be on the same side. So the, therefore our light is coming from the upper left. Okay. That is the best way to think about this. So when you're creating your stuff, we want to keep in mind that we want to keep the shading on the same side. So this will be just very easy. We can bring this over here like this. That looks nice there. Okay. And then we're done. Now, let's go in here, zoom in. Zoom in here. And what I was going to say is we can always perfect things even after you've revolved them. Because what the cool thing is, is that as I'm pulling these things out, it's adjusting it. That's what I love about some of these 3D tools. And I'm hoping they're not giving you guys any problems because there are glitches that they have not solved. And notice how rough that is. Remember, if you have a an object, and right now, what I want to do is edit this. 
is I want you want to make sure your blend steps are up high enough. Now notice this. I've clicked on this object and in my appearance palette, the 3D is not popping up. That effect is not popping up. And that's because I'm selecting this object with the direct selection tool. Now if I select with the main selection tool here, okay, and select the whole thing, then it pops up. Because that's something that you may run into, okay? And I like to troubleshoot every possible thing you're going to run into. So let me up my blend steps here, okay? And let's also add another light source on the back here. I'm going to make this, and let's see what it looks like. I'll pull it over here. Because what I'm doing is, this will be for a reflective light. Oh, every time I'm moving that, you know, see, that's a problem with some of these things here. Okay, now, ah, I like that much better. Okay, much better job. Okay, and my ambient light's set to 50. If we want to lower it just a little bit, we can. Okay, you don't want to lower it too much because it won't fit in with the rest. So maybe it's somewhere around, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll zoom out and see what the rest of everything looks like. And, yeah, not bad. Okay, not bad. So we need a cast shadow for that. And when I was originally building this, you know, I was building it, and I was thinking about cast shadows, and you can see kind of my cast shadow I drew out here. But, you know, I'm going to actually think about maybe just using circles here, ellipses. So I'm going to draw one ellipse, move it down. Let's come over here to the cast shadow of the house, and let's turn off our drawing for just a second here. And let's pick this same color up, okay? And it actually picks, it picks up our transparency, too. But, you know, if I'm going to do a cast shadow of this tree without my drawing to help me out... I would probably want to kind of mimic because you know if you're an illustration student or if you're a student who who gets involved in creating things creating artwork you know learning how to do a cash out is so important and one of the things about it is if we were to look at this object from the top like if we were to look at it straight on down we would see a circle because it's basically what's it what it is so what I'm doing is I'm imagining a light coming down at this angle. Whoops, let's get out of here. And let's pull this over here. Pull this, oh, didn't want to pull that one. Pull this one down, oh. Pull this down just a little bit more here, okay. And then we'll, we'll just copy this one. And the way I'm copying is moving it and then holding down the Alt key. Okay, and then we'll make it a little smaller here. But... I would imagine it being made out of all those, and then we're going to add our pen tool here. So we're going to, I just do the P key, we're going to add a point, then we're going to pull it out here, and we'll use my pen tool and delete that point, and then do Shift C for that anchor point tool, and we're going to point that just a little bit, okay? So see, by thinking about how the light would be hitting this, and thinking about like, okay, well, Light's gonna, if light's coming down and it's prevent, and this tree shape is preventing the light from going around, then the first this base is gonna obviously dictate a lot of that shape, and each one of these is gonna dictate the next and the next and the next. And so that's kind of how I always think about doing cast shadows. And so let's take all these shapes here, and let's let's uh, combine them with our pathfinders. There we go. And then let's go and do, um, we'll do a Gaussian blur on this. So effect, blur, Gaussian blur. And we're up close enough so we can actually see it better. We don't want it too much. Click OK. And then let's go and do this. We'll do, we'll, we'll cut it for a second, Command X. Um, we'll paste it in back of the tree. And there it goes. And we can move it a little bit too. We'll move it back up there a little bit, okay. So let's look at what we've got built so far. So see, I'm almost done here. And what we're going to do next is I am going to make these marker shapes. So let's get out of here for a second. There we go. And what I had to get out of when I, when I was on that isolation mode, which gets in the way sometimes. So the way I made these marker shapes was very easy. The, the drawing is actually more complex than what the shapes are. Because the shape is, I, I use a circle. And I'm going to make that circle, let's say, a blue, perhaps. We'll use that color blue. Then I'm going to copy, Command-C, paste in front. 
and then we're just going to make it smaller. So I'm going to hold on my Alt key and my Shift key, and we're going to make it somewhat smaller, and then we'll just pick another light color here, this color for instance. All right, on my swatches. Now you could go over here and pick off colors too. And you don't have to use the same colors, but let's use the same method. So we're going to select both of these shapes and we can group them. I'm hoping, well, actually, you know what? Let's not group them. Let's just see if this will work without grouping. Because I like to try, uh, I'm always experimenting here. And when I made this thing, I was experimenting. So let's go to, um, we'll do 3D, we'll do extrude and bevel. Okay. So it creates that, but let's cancel out here for a second because what I want to do is let's take our drawing off so we can see what we're building as we're as it's going on here because it's hard to see with that drawing on top. So let's go to extrude and bevel again, and this is what we get. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to group them because see how that did? Not unless you were looking for that effect, okay? So let's let's take both these shapes, Command-G, go back to, I was just curious what kind of effect that would make. That's how you learn. Okay, there we go. I like that. Now, let's see here. We want to, I'm going to choose one of these presets here. Isometric, top left. Oops. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll make the extrusion depth a lot less. Actually, we can type in a number there. We'll type in 22, and then in order to make it work, we have to go somewhere else. And that is, uh, because if you hit return, it clicks OK. All right, so let's let's take it down to maybe 18. I don't want it too thick. All right, that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some beveling. And I think the what I did was, yeah, there we go. Ooh, that looks cool. That looks really cool. And I didn't have to do much at all. Now let's let's actually make the extrusion depth more here. Let's go back to 22 and see if it looks okay with that. There we go. I like that. And it's got my lighting on it and everything. And one of the things is is that um, I like this, you know, the the shape of it. But I kind of also like the steps, you know. So sometimes, remember, we were talking about when we we're doing blending between two lines in order to have uh, only so many lines. You know, sometimes you get this kind of nice look. And you might want to have it so that it's not smooth. Because if we bring up our blend steps, you know, that smoothness is going to go away here. But, you know, I might want to have it so it's it's a little choppy. It might, you know, it might have a nice look to it. So that's why I'm put, making it a little more choppy looking, just to see that, okay? Um, my ambient light, uh, we can affect that too if we want it less or more, okay? And I'm going to do less here okay and we'll just click OK all right now we've got it made let's turn on our template to see if it's around the right size here or and it is okay and just to move that that's nice and we can actually play around with the color a little bit more if we want to but anyway let's just create a cache shadow for that and give a Gaussian blur and make copies of it and we'll be through so let's uh let's see here we'll just use an ellipse for that Okay, so we'll make our ellipse, make it a little larger here, and let's turn off our our thing for the moment, and I want to see if I can use this color still again, and if not, we can always pick another color. We're going to go to blur, Gaussian blur, and we don't want to blur too much, okay, and then we're going to actually just take it, I'm going to cut it for a second, and paste it in the back of this. Whoa! Now, that was not expecting that. Let me do that again. Whoa! That was cool. All right, so what it did was actually paste it in the back of the group there. So something's happened when you're working here. I'm going to go and click on the path and do paste in front here. There we go. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. That, you know, you... You know, that's the thing sometimes is things happen, you got to troubleshoot. Because things will not always work out the way you plan them to. All right, now, I think this should have, yeah, it still has multiple. Okay, good. So let's take this, and we'll take this shape and this shape. And let's turn on our 
drawing layer and let's move these upwards so we put them over now as I, we move them I'm holding down my alt key so I can actually move them into place here and we might have to resize I think I made these just a little smaller back here we'll make that too small We'll play that side. Okay, let me zoom in here. Because I think in most of these games, these things are always the same size because we're, we're using, they're using some form of isometric perspective. And isometric means that it's, it doesn't, they don't, the, the perspective doesn't go to a vanishing point. It's, it's emulating uh, perspective. And that is, you've got angles going off at, the same amount on each side of the object. But it's a way to do a design for a game so that you don't have, so that you know you can kind of keep the same perspective if you're continuing up. We would never ever reach a sky. So now I've finished all this, okay? And let me take a look at it, see if it needs any editing. Um, if we want to edit any of the colors, like if we want to edit this 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 inner circle here, make it brighter. Um, if I get my direct selection tool, I should be able to get to it. Yeah, there we go. Now, one thing I, I played around with earlier was this. So I want to change the color of all those. So I'm going to go to select same fill color and select them all, even though and, and it only selects those because I can tell by looking at the color here. That does not have a question mark, okay? Um, so anyway, I can make that, if I want to make it brighter, I can raise the yellow on. I'm just playing around see what I can get here. Because I, I just thought, while well, I was playing around there, I might as well see what we can get here. Maybe I want to make it more toward the red. Well, I kind of like that, you know? Maybe, maybe it's more do. That's cool. So you can play around with things and try to make them better here. Perhaps they're red buttons. They don't have to be the the orange, you know. You just want them a different color than what's on the outside. Okay. Anyway, I could do this all night, but I won't. So let's take that down a little bit more and just call it, call it done. And that's going to end our tutorial, okay?